Good day, everyone. Uh, my name is Andrea Main. I am the Business Development Manager for our Transportation Department here at Morrison Hirschfield. Today's presentation will review the key considerations for selecting and prioritizing transportation infrastructure projects. I will be showcasing examples of projects completed by Morrison Hirschfield that provide high value returns to the communities in which our clients serve. We will work with our clients to ensure projects are successfully delivered to be aligned with their goals. Here are some important considerations I will be speaking to today. As you can see, the list includes several issues that transportation operation departments face each and every day and must keep in mind as they make decisions on which transportation projects to pursue. There are many variables that factor into which transportation project gets priority over others. The list you see is a sample of what our clients must weigh in order to decide which projects will be rolled out. With finite resources and budgets, it can be difficult to address opinions on needs versus wants. First and foremost, the top priority is the safety of the community and users of the infrastructure. The intersection of Bank Street and Riverside Drive in Ottawa, Ontario has been notoriously dangerous for many years. High traffic volumes mixed with increasing numbers of pedestrians and cyclists has resulted in many accidents and even a fatality. Jointly, the City of Ottawa and the National Capital Commission made it a priority to design and construct a grade-separated multi-use pathway along the bank of the Rideau River that would provide a safe alternative for pedestrians and cyclists and also maintain a separation between vehicles and active transportation users. Morrison Hirschfield designed the path and today it's a scenic and safe option for the community. We understand the important emphasis placed on safety of all users in transportation facilities. Join us for a presentation on GIS school transportation routes on October 2nd at 11 a.m. This presentation will highlight how GIS modeling can be used for examining modes of transportation for a Vancouver-based school that assess the accessibility of their swing site that would be used in the event of an earthquake emergency. The next consideration that is very important is listening to the public and what your community is telling you. They are the ones using the transportation infrastructure every day and they are going to have a lot of insight. Public and community input can have a strong influence on prioritization of projects and also how those projects will be designed and constructed. Engaging with residents, business owners, and other stakeholders in the project area can provide some needed insights into the current issues and potential solutions directly from the people that are impacted on a daily basis. In 2019, Empress Street in the city of Winnipeg was voted worst road in Manitoba in the annual CAA survey for a second year. Empress Street is a major arterial road that connects many Winnipeggers to their destinations around the city. Residents cited potholes, crumbling pavement, and poor or absent cycling and walking infrastructure as their biggest concerns. Morrison Hirschfield provided the geometric design, bridge rehabilitation engineering, and active transportation infrastructure design. It was officially reopened this summer to a smooth, comfortable roadway that connects the community and a brand new cycling and walking facility that links to other parts of the city's active transportation network. Morrison Hirschfield has a great presentation coming up on October 6th at 1 p.m. that showcases our experience with public engagement during the feasibility study for the James Bay All Season Road. This presentation will outline our engagement process with First Nations residents in Northern communities and the lessons learned from this unique project. Another consideration is assessing how the infrastructure investment will generate a positive return back to the community. Benefits could include safety, increased capacity and travel time reliability, and economic development and growth. Whistler Blackcomb wanted to create an adventure that would attract summer visitors without impacting ski operations in the winter months. Morrison Hirschfield was the lead consultant responsible for the overall bridge design and construction engineering of this spectacular 130 meter long steel pedestrian suspension bridge with a viewing platform anchored to a cliff more than 2100 meters above sea level. The new Cloud Raker Sky Bridge at Whistler successfully opened to the public in the summer of 2018 and has drawn thousands of visitors ever since. 
To find out more about this breathtaking project, join us on Thursday, September 29th at 12 p.m. to learn more about the unique design and construction challenges that were overcome. Sometimes spending has to be directed towards aging and emergency repair of existing infrastructure. Planning and allocating budgets can be done through asset management programs, but there are some instances where emergency repairs are necessary ahead of schedule. Morrison Hirschfield recently helped the City of Whitehorse complete an emergency design for the Mount McIntyre Bailey Bridge. This particular bridge was struck and damaged twice, once by a tractor trailer in 2017 and again by a garbage truck in 2019. Luckily, insurance was able to cover costs of repairs, but not reconstruction. Morrison Hirschfield provided inspection assessment, interim usage recommendations, and rehabilitation design that would be covered by insurance. There was a presentation all about this project and the engineering design that went into rehabilitating the damaged bridge in a timely and cost-effective manner on Friday, October 2nd at 11.30 a.m. Implementing sustainable projects contribute to the well-being of the community and the environment, and there are often economic funding considerations for sustainable projects as well. The Amherst Island Ferry Dock Conversion Project is currently being constructed to accommodate the first electric ferries in North America. The Ministry of Transportation Ontario initiated the project to upgrade the existing ferry terminals from diesel to electric to accommodate the end loading ramps for the Frontenac 2 and the future new Amherst Island Ferry. The new ferries will produce a much lower carbon emission rate than before, and the community will see many benefits as a result. Morrison Hirschfield will be presenting on our experience with planning for climate resilience. This presentation explains all about how climate change could affect the light rail transit infrastructure and the various planning considerations that need to be addressed in order to ensure the project will be resilient in the face of extreme climate fluctuations in the future. When it comes to urban sprawl and connecting communities to the central business district, planning for these types of projects is always essential. Public transportation projects are a prime example of this. The Winnipeg BRT line is the new dedicated high-speed bus transit network integrating all existing bus routes in southwest Winnipeg. This project aids in the decreased congestion of roadways in Winnipeg by bypassing several high congestion areas, making the option more appealing for its riders. If you would like to hear more about Morrison Hirschfield's involvement on the Southwest Rapid Transit Busway project, which includes cycling infrastructure design and reconstruction of the Pembina Highway underpass, you can see us on Wednesday, October 7th at 3.30. Morrison Hirschfield used innovation to extend the life of a retaining wall structure supporting the Trans-Canada Highway on a sharp curve just east of Golden, BC. Our client wanted to replace the wall during the upcoming Phase 4 of the Kicking Horse Canyon project, but wanted a temporary repair to extend the service life for another 5 to 10 years until completion of that project. If all of the engineering details about how this was done at our technical presentation on September 22nd at 11 a.m. Finally, if you were ever unsure of which projects are highest priority or want to solidify your prioritization decisions, using a consulting engineer to conduct assessment studies will give you peace of mind. Morrison Hirschfield has been doing assessments on the Gardner Expressway in Toronto, Ontario for almost 40 years. The assessments are used to help the City of Toronto understand which parts of the highway require rehabilitation in the short term and which can wait. The ongoing assessments and collaboration between our transportation engineers at Morrison Hirschfield and the City of Toronto ensures the highway is always operational and there is a clear understanding of projects on the horizon and the year-to-year -year budget is maximized. On the theme of highway assessments, we have a technical presentation on corrosion activity assessments that uses interesting survey technologies on Wednesday, October 7th at 4 p.m. That wraps up our presentation on some of the considerations for prioritizing operating expenses for transportation projects. I hope you found our projects interesting and that you can make it out to our technical presentations that we have at this TAC conference. Please feel free to reach out to me with any questions. I would be happy to connect you with one of our many engineers, planners, or specialists. 
Thank you very much for joining me today. I will now take some questions from the audience. 